Thank you, uh, Chairwoman, and uh, thanks uh, to all the uh, witnesses uh, who joined us today uh, to discuss the economic challenges our country faces. I represent a working class district. My constituents are the hardest hit by inflation and the hardest hit by interest rate hikes. We have to understand what's driving inflation in order to tackle it. And from your testimony, it sounds like it's corporate greed. Uh, Dr. Maboud, in your testimony, you raised a pretty striking quote that I just have to revisit. Earlier this year, the CFO of Constellation Brands, a company that owns Modelo and Corona beers, and I admit I uh, enjoy these frequently, uh, and I quote him, as you know, we have a consumer set that skews a bit more Hispanic than some of our competitors. And in times of economic downturn, if you will, or weakness, they tend to get hit a little harder and they recover a little bit slower. So we want to make sure that we're not leaving any pricing on the table. We want to take as much as we can. End of quote. I represent a Latino, uh, largely immigrant district, and I can confirm that our communities were hit hard by the pandemic. But this is shocking. Our suffering is their excuse to raise prices. Can you talk about how corporate concentration is raising prices for some of the most basic goods that my constituents buy from diapers to beer? Thank you for that question. And that, that quote is really striking. I mean, the truth of the matter is we've heard over and over and over on earnings calls across a range of sectors that these big corporations simply have the power to raise prices, particularly when they have the cover of inflation to do so. And they're not they're shameless about it, right? I mean, that, that quote is so ball-faced about exactly what it is that they're going to do, which is to exploit the pain of a community and, and pocket the profits as a result. And so we see that time and time again. We've seen that in Johnson & Johnson, with Chipotle, with McDonald's, with, I mean, I can go on and on with the number of companies that we've heard um, really taking a moment and of this moment to jack up prices and pocket the profits. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vahisen. Big corporations and uh, local businesses faced similar challenges at the start of the pandemic, but market concentration allowed big businesses to reap record profits while local businesses struggled to recover. And as always, consumers pay the price with inflation. In your testimony, you laid out that our policy choices brought us here. I hope they can bring us out as well. Can you? Can we reverse decades of corporate concentration to avoid what we see happening today? What is the first step? Thank you, Congressman. You're absolutely right. For 40 years, we've tolerated consolidation across the economy, and it was a policy choice. And just as we initiated certain pro-merger policy choices in the 1980s, we can undo those. And I think a good place to start is by reversing some of the mergers that have happened in recent years. Meatpacking is a great, great industry to start with since it's a driver of inflation, and we've seen extraordinary levels of concentration in that industry, driven in large measure by consolidation. So I think the Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission can actually unwind these mergers and create more competitive market conditions and going forward can strengthen anti-merger law to ensure that businesses grow through investment and hiring instead of by acquiring existing corporations and enhancing their pricing power. Thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Drummer, uh, from what we just discussed, it's clear that corporate concentration and price gouging directly of, uh, contributes to increased prices of goods and services. Corporate greed should be addressed to mitigate inflation, but many policy experts are only talking about raising interest rates. Can you talk about in the next 50 seconds how raising interest rates hurts working class people? That's an excellent question. Uh, yes, uh, if we use interest rates uh, to curb inflation, what are we doing? We are literally driving down the demand for, for labor, which disproportionately affects the lowest income workers which means that we are lowering their ability to bargain, right, and to demand higher wages, which means we're taking money out of their pocket in order to balance our economy. That is the most inequitable way to handle this crisis. We believe that the best way to address this affordability crisis is to turn our gaze away from inflation and focus on deep structural changes to rebalance our economy. Thank you, sir. And uh, Madam Chair, I uh, yield back.